opportunity is in your view? I, I do. I mean, we, we've been saying this for some time, but you don't want to play defense anymore. It's time to play some offense, and I think that you want to be more exposed to stocks than, than bonds that really aren't as attractive to us right now at these low, low yields. You have some interesting holdings. I have to point out one that's been in the news, and that's yeah. Carnival. It's your third biggest holding as of the end of February. So why hold on to that one? Yeah, well, we, we, we actually bought it after the uh, Concordia sank, and just really, really it allowed us to get into a, a, a stock at a very reasonable price uh, compared to once it, where it once was. Now you've got a lot of things working for them. They're going to spin off you know, $3.5 billion of free cash flow that's going to pay not only for the dividend, but it's also going to pay for any CapEx needs they have for new boats, which at this point aren't many. So it's a really nice way to pick up a 3.5% a dividend yield and a nice uh, duopoly with Royal Caribbean. So this intrigues me. So you obviously don't worry so much about headline risks. You're looking more at some deep financials in terms of what the growth is for these companies. If the headlines come out and they're negative, it gives us an opportunity that are long-term oriented, three to five year type of track record to get into a duopoly, um, you know, uh, such as a company like this. So it really works out nicely for us. What do you think about small cap versus large right now? Small caps made a very good run, obviously. Um, it's been a, the right place to be. And uh, luckily, that's, what, that's where we, we pretty much were positioned um, in the la all of last year, which really helped our returns. And we continue to uh, have, have a large uh, exposure there to small caps. So give me an example of another small cap company that's in the fund that you like that's got a compelling story. You know, one that I like is, um, is Sotheby's. Uh, so this is another duopoly, um, and we were able to um, take a look at that with Christie's. So this is a 250-year-old company um, that I think is going to do quite well. In the last uh, five years, this is the first time that they've been able to raise commission rates along with Christie's. So it shows you the strength in their underlying business. But as long, it's not a, it's not a uh, demand story, it's a supply story. So as long as there's death, debt, divorce, and discretion, which I think there will be, art's going to come to the market and it's going to be a good, a good deal for them. Yeah, I think you're guaranteed you're going to have all that. What, what about bonds? You're worried about a bond bubble. Yeah, I actually am. Uh, I think that, you know, basically we're going to continue on this, or the Fed's going to continue on this $85 billion a month uh, bond buying spree until unemployment gets to, what, 6.5% or something like that. So I think um, we, we think it will eventually you know, come back. You look at where rates were in 1981 to where they are today, 10, 2% on the 10-year. It's, uh, it's getting a little bubbly for us, and, uh, and we think stocks will be a better place to be. So what does that mean for the fixed income that you do hold in terms of duration? We want to stay shorter, and, uh, and, and we're not, when we take risks, we're, we can buy 10% of our fixed income portion in less than investment grade. So when we go through our equity research efforts, when we're looking at these companies, we also can find some interesting fixed income opportunities to try to outperform on the fixed income side. So in some cases, do you own corporate debt as well as stock of an individual company? That's exactly right. Yeah, if we've done the work and we think it's going to work and we're, we're taking risk, um, but we know we're taking that risk, that's the key. So we think it's going to work well and, and on the bond side also. What was the smartest stock holding you had last year? What one really uh, Actually, there's a company called 3D Systems that we think is uh, going to continue to do well. This is the leader in the 3D, uh, 3D printing um, uh, business that uh, the whole industry is going to grow at 23% compounded over the next five years. And this is the 800-pound gorilla in, in that industry. So very excited about the future. And it's actually pulled back. It was at $15 last year and closed at, you know, in the mid-40s or something like that. Now it's pulled back to 30. Great opportunity for people to get involved with that one now. What's the biggest risk in terms of stocks that you're worried about right now? Um, in terms of, I guess, just the valuations. A lot of things have really picked up uh, recently. So even on the S&P, you're looking at a multiple that's gotten closer to 14 and a half times. Now, you got to think that I think we can still, the S&P can do 15 times $108 in earnings. And, and next year, I think you're looking at 15 times maybe $115 in earnings. So I think, you know, when you look forward to next year, you're looking at 1725 on the S&P. So even though valuations are getting a little bit stretched, um, I, think, I think there's plenty of room left to go. And certainly better than uh, unattractive bonds.